So as everyone knows by now, Dylan Mulvaney has expressed her dissatisfaction with Bud Light because they supposedly didn't defend her against the wave of attacks in the wake of her promotional sponsorship with the company. Except the problem here is, is that they did. They continued to promote and defend doing so even though they took a loss of hundreds of millions of dollars, which is amazing for a major alcohol distiller. The problem with Dylan Mulvaney is the fact that she has made millions, or at least a good million itself, endorsing different products like sports bras, tampons, makeup products, what have you. Now, many people that promote these products often say things like, oh, I use this product all the time, and it's great, and, you know, you know, and you see a lot of this from your alt history and history and your horror genre, your makeup artists, and just your generic YouTubers in general. It's just unfortunately how things are now. Most people have sponsorships because unfortunately the YouTube partnership doesn't really pay well anymore. So people have to resort to sponsorships and stuff like that and pretty much advertising. Um, now, Many of the people that do use these, like I said, are just like, oh, this product is great, I use it all the time, yada yada. Even though that's rarely the case, most of these individuals very rarely even try the product and are often just blindly endorsing them to get their money. This is why problematic uh, products like Michelle Fan's Lancome and those that are selling the online therapy scam BetterHelp aren't actually being used by those that are actually endorsing it. If they did, they would know themselves what shitty products they are and why they would be problematic. Of course, it's also possible that they do know that you know what shitty products they are, but they're just selling them anyway. Now, I do believe there are some YouTubers that would honestly be a bit more guarded of the products they endorse to their audience if they actually like did their research and actually just knew how bad they were. But they are still guilty of blindly promoting them in exchange for well, monetary incentive. Uh, in the case of Dylan Mulvaney, she promotes products that she knows she cannot obviously use, and likely so does the company that is paying her to shill their product, because they don't really care. They're just like, yeah, can you just like promote this for us, advertise, whatever. Now, I don't think I have to tell you which product that she obviously does not use, or why it's obvious that she would not use them, nor is it transphobic to point that out. Especially since I myself am a trans woman. I'm not going to use fucking tampons. And Dylan Mulvaney, you know, very obviously does not use tampons. And it's, again, it's not transphobic to say that. It is a fact. We don't get periods, therefore how can we endorse a product? I mean, we can endorse a product, but obviously we would be endorsing a product that we very obviously have no need for. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's not transphobic to point that out, it's just a fact. Now, my fellow comrade Jason Unruh pointed this out as well in his recent video, which is why, uh, and I'll link that in the description. And to those of you that want to scream transphobia and homophobia at him, no, he's not. He's pointing out the facts and the obvious elephant in the room, just like I am. And also, he himself is gay. I myself am pansexual, so all the libs can just shut the fuck up. Jason also points out that people like Dylan Mulvaney are social media narcissists and Richie Riches, because she has made a ton of money off of these promotions, including her recent Bud Light promotion, and yet throws them under the bus for not defending her, when they very clearly did, and they continued to show support and stand beside the trans community, despite them losing hundreds of millions of dollars, which is just honestly quite impressive given corporate America. And I have to agree with Comrade Jason, because, well, He's right. 
Dylan Mulvaney is the epitome of a narcissistic sociopath who cares more about material wealth than actual products that she's endorsing, or to or her even her audience. And then as soon as they don't meet her expectations, or they don't give her enough of a check, essentially, oh, well, they're transphobic, don't buy their product. And this is also a classic, like, pick-me scenario. Not like the Kelly Cadigan or the Blair White pick-me's, but the textbook liberal one. The, one. the kind that will exploit themselves and their community, their audience, for monetary gain and sponsorship promotions, and then use that same community to turn on a company who, for once, was actually standing with the gay and trans community because they didn't give give their precious starlet enough money or didn't defend her in the way in the way or amount that she or her audience would have liked or just blatantly lie about it for sympathy because you know she knows that she'll get it from her lame brain audience you know the whole pick me love me give me monies that sort of crap yeah now I say this not to get a reaction from th that certain section of the trans community, and you know who you are, you class traitor, lumpen aristocratic, petite bourgeois liberals who either are narcissistic, pick me, richy riches yourself, or just stupid blind liberals who probably stand there and blindly defend these people and probably vote blue no matter who, as if voting a goddamn th you know does a goddamn thing but to but to legitimize the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie but I digress I say this as a trans woman I say this as a marxist and someone who is a realist as someone who has seen too much of this annoying bull crap on youtube and other various social media platforms and it's something I've wanted to say for a long time but I've never really felt it would have made for a relevant enough or long enough video. But given D Dylan Mulvaney, the fact that she is trans, and the whole reactionary backlash that Bud Light has been getting for supporting the gay and trans community, I felt I that this was kind of the perfect time to finally say something about it. The point here is, Bud Light did a promotion in order to pat themselves on the back and come off as the bigger person to say, you know, look at us, we're so progressive, buy our shitty beer, the whole, again, kind of falling in line with that same thing of pick me, you know, give me monies. It's, it's the same crap, just different sides of the coin, but in this case, that's not enough for one party. It's not enough for Dylan Mulvaney. Because despite being trans, despite being a woman, she is still white, and she is very, still very privileged. She is a middle to upper class, you know, she's an aristocrat at this point. I don't know what her background was, but it doesn't matter. She is now moved up in the class rank and would be considered, you know, largely middle to upper class. In fact, if she's getting millions of dollars from just these promotions, she's very much upper class. She's ruling class. She's aristocratic. And that makes her a very privileged, in this case, white privileged, rich media personality. People like her always covet more wealth, more materialistic bullcrap, more sponsorships. And if you don't, and if you don't sponsor me, oh, well, you're just transphobic. That's not what trans people do. That's not what we stand for. That's not what our community stands for. That's not who we are. And it's certainly not who I am, what I do, and what I stand for. That's something that a narcissistic, social media narcissistic pick-me does. So this begs the question, Dylan. How much money and attention do you need before it's enough. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Until next time.